breaking down the five stats that matter most when evaluating hitters in today's game. Stats the front offices are using, stats that cut through the noise, and stats that actually tell you how good a hitter really is and how good they might become. For decades, we judged hitters by the same handful of stats, batting average, home runs, and RBIs. And don't get me wrong, those stats aren't useless. They tell part of the story. But today, we have way more tools to understand what makes a hitter great. And it all started with one simple realization. You can hit 300 and still hurt your team if you never walk. And you can hit 240 and be one of the most productive players in the league. The evolution began with OBP and slugging, which helped us recognize that getting on base and hitting for power both matter. Then came OPS, which gave us a quick shorthand for offensive value. But now, with tools like Hawkeye, StatCast, and frame-by-frame -frame pitch tracking, we can dive way deeper into expected results, contact quality, swing decisions, and a ton more. Your classic old-school stats still serve a purpose, but the new age metrics, they give us better context, evaluation, and projection tools, which is exactly what MLB front offices are using to build rosters and develop talent today. So let's walk through the five hitting stats that actually matter in today's game and why they paint a much clearer picture than anything you'll find on the back of a baseball card. P.S. We won't be stating these in any specific order and I'll cover why at the end of the video. Also, one more thing, the purpose of this video is to identify and show off some of my favorite offensive statistics, not to dive in depth on each of them. If you want to know more about any of these stats, you can check out the other videos on them on this channel linked in the description below. All right, let's get started with OPS, on base plus slugging. It's been around for decades, and there's a reason that it caught on. It is super easy to calculate and understand, and because of that, it's made its way onto big league scoreboards and broadcasts pretty regularly nowadays. To calculate it, all you have to do is add OBP, or how often guys are getting on base, with slug, hitting for power, and you get OPS. The best part about it is that it correlates decently with run production, even though it is a simple calculation. For a scale, hitters over a 900 OPS are considered great. Over 1,000, we're talking about the best of the best. But it's not perfect. Here's the catch. OPS weighs OBP and slugging equally, when OBP is actually about twice as valuable as slugging in run creation. It also inherits some of the flaws that we've discussed before on this channel about OBP and slugging. So, while it is a great quick snapshot, it's not perfect. Still, it is one of the easiest to calculate stats to bridge yourself into baseball analytics. Now let's get a little bit more complex. If you want a clean, powerful summary of offensive value, start with WOBA, or weighted on base average, and WRC plus, or weighted runs created plus. Here's why they matter. They value every outcome appropriately. Walks, singles, doubles, triples, and homers, based on actual run production of each type of play result. Where slugging values a home run as twice as much as a double arbitrarily, WOBA and weighted runs created plus actually do the work to calculate how much more productive each play result is every single year. Here's a cheat sheet. For WOBA, you are working with a scale that you should be familiar with. League average WOBA is adjusted to match the league average OBP that year, typically sitting around that 320 mark for professional baseball. So, below 300 is bad. Above 400 is great. Your WOBA leader at the time of posting this video in 2025 is Aaron Judge with a whopping 484. Then we can dive into weighted runs created plus. This stat is also adjusted to be easy to interpret. The back end calculations for weighted runs created plus are very similar to that of WOBA. So if somebody has an above average WOBA, you can expect them to have an above average weighted run created plus. A WRC plus of 100 is going to be league average. Anything above that is better and below is worse. Up to 120 is going to be your all-star level, and above 150 is MVP territory. These are a couple of the first numbers smart teams look at when assessing a bat. If you're not above average here, you better bring something else to the table, as these stats are truly all-encompassing of a player's offensive capabilities. Third, let's jump into expected stats. Ever watch a guy crush a ball all week but have nothing to show for it? That's where expected stats come in. These are stat cast based metrics that focus on quality of contact instead of outcomes. 
Some of the most popular stats here are going to be ex-WOBA or expected weighted on base average and then expected batting average or expected slugging. These show what your typical slash line should be based on exit velocity and launch angle. So why do these matter? Well, they strip out luck and bad defense. It helps predict breakouts before the box score catches up and they spot over performers heading for regression. The idea behind these types of stats is to identify specific players who may be doing everything right at the plate, but they leave the park with nothing to show for it. When hitters are consistently putting the ball in play at an optimal launch angle with above average exit velocities, our historical data says they will eventually see more good results than bad results. So when there's a discrepancy between a player's actual and expected stats, you can expect that player's actual stats to move towards their expected stats over time whether that is an improvement to their stat line or a regression. Expected stats are a great way to find a diamond in the rough. So if you want to get ahead in fantasy baseball or just look smart in the group chat, expected stats are your cheat code to identifying players who are soon to break out. Our fourth stat is going to be hard hit and barrel percentage, the damage dealers. So let's talk about power metrics. These are the stats driving our expected statistics and are sometimes a little easier to interpret than the ones we just covered because of their simplicity. Two of the best metrics teams use to measure power are hard hit percentage, which is the percentage of balls hit at 95 miles per hour or higher, and barrel percentage, which takes things a step further than hard hit percentage by defining a launch angle range. Basically, it's taking a look at how frequently you hit the ball hard and on a line. As for benchmarks, hard hit percentage Around 40 and above is solid, and above 50% is elite. And with those extra parameters, a good barrel percentage is going to be around 8% and 12% and above is top tier. These stats predict future extra base hits and home runs better than almost anything. If a hitter is consistently barreling the ball, good results will come, even if the numbers aren't there yet, just like our expected stats. Before we get to that fifth stat, are you looking to improve your pitch arsenal using only a baseball and your phone? PitchLogic supports real-time pitch feedback and development metrics, perfect for pitchers trying to develop their stuff. If you are interested in checking one out for yourself, check out the link in the description to get yours today. Now to that final stat, K to walk ratio in plate discipline metrics. You can't hit the ball if you swing at bad pitches. Plate discipline isn't sexy, but it's one of the most predictive skills in the game. Your metrics to watch, are going to be K to walk ratio, simple but powerful comparing the number of times a hitter strikes out compared to how many times they walk, chase rate or your O swing percentage, which is how often a hitter swings at pitches outside of the zone, and contact percentage, when they are swinging, are they making contact? Elite plate discipline guys, think Juan Soto, Gunnar Henderson, and Brandon Nimmo. Teams have their own more complex model for tracking a player's decisions at the plate that we discussed in our last video if you want to check out this topic in more depth. But the main takeaway from a stat like this is that plate discipline scales well across all levels and is one of the most important stats you can look at for determining how good a hitter is. So the five stats that actually matter for hitters, here's your cheat sheet. WOBA and weighted runs created plus. This gives you your total offensive value context adjusted. OPS is going to tell you your power and on base all in one quick to calculate snapshot. Expected stats. This measures the quality of contact and removes a hitter's luck to show you how they may be performing in the future. Hard hit percentage and barrel percentage, which predict power and extra base hits over the course of a season. And finally, K to walk and chase rate, talking about plate discipline and a hitter's sustainability. Great hitters usually dominate in at least three of these five categories. So if you're scouting, coaching, or playing, this is the modern way to measure offense. If you found this video helpful, make sure you check out our breakdowns on x -Woba, plate discipline, and swing decisions. They'll help you dive even deeper. Thanks for watching, and let me know down in the comments, which of these five stats do you trust most, and who's your favorite underrated hitter based on them? See you next time on Simple Sabermetrics.